now let's uh, create the product site uh, we are done with the categories now it's about integrating that products to the category so for that uh, let me go back to the code let me open a new terminal and then let's create uh, the product site artisan make a model product and then let's create the uh, factory the migration the seeder as well as the controller with an uh, with an api endpoint api functions for the controller so this should ideally create as the product uh, factory migration um, seeder controller all of that is created now the next part is to create couple of more migration which are needed let's say for uh, creating the dependency between let's say one to many uh, relationship between the product line one product line can have um, one to many products and then again categories can have multiple products under them so it, it's uh, so these relationship we, we will have to set up so for that I'm gonna create uh, the migrations for that PHP Addison migration make migration i'm gonna call it um <clears throat> let me just define the proper names so it's going to be product category table as well as um, product so i'm just, it's just gonna say create um, product category table um that's the first one product category table this is to map the product against the category and we need one more called uh, product line product table so that is the other one which will have uh, a dependency or at least a one to many relationship with the product line so product line one product line can have multiple product that's the relation we are going to set so that's the next migration we are creating so those two are created now let's now check um, what can what all things to need to be done so let's go to the migrations first um <clears throat> to start with so we have the product category as well as a product table so even before that let's update the products table so products table is going to have um, the title caption and details three these three fields are what we are going to add table I think it's going to be a string with the um, name as title and I'm going to limit it to 30 characters and I'm going to keep it as unique again I don't want my, you uh, I, I want the table title of the products to be unique and then you have the second part which is uh, again a string I'm going to call it as caption maybe I'll allow 30 lines 30 characters maybe more than that uh, maybe a 60 character <clears throat> limit on the caption that I can have and then finally I'm just going to have another text which is more of a um, details page detail side which can have maybe we can limit it to I'm not limiting anything here let let that be as many number as possible maybe we can limit it as per the front tense that we are going to use so I'm going to keep it open text. Maybe it will hit uh, um, max around 255. We can, we can set it in the front end or at least on, on the controller side. So this is my table structure. Now let me go to the other two, <coughs> which is category. So category is going to have the foreign key constraints defined. So I'm going to do that. Table is going to have a constraint. I think I need to set uh, the foreign foreign id foreign id of uh, first is this is going to be product and category i can say product is one which is going to have uh, constraint on products <coughs> so this is my table products so i can allow update um, so cascade update i can allow Cas cascade and update um that is the first part so what all things we need to take care let's have a 
hold on to that right now so i can allow the products to be updated i can also allow the product entry to be deleted from this table so i can also allow a cascade on delete as well um come on cascade on delete so these these are the constraints on this table similarly i can have the other dependency uh, which is um, <coughs> on the cat category id so i'm gonna add that category id it's going to be on the categories table and then i can allow a cascade on update but i might restrict this from happening because i don't want the category to be deleted let's say i don't want this um <clears throat> let's say um if a category delete is happening I, I should not allow that entry to be deleted because there is a product associated to that until that product is associated with the category i should not allow the category to be deleted so i might just restrict uh, or what do i call restrict on delete so this is going to not allow the category to be deleted because it's associated with the product so we might have to disassociate it detach that all the products related to, to a category before deleting that category so that's the idea behind restricting it over here so that's also done so the final part is uh, to uh, have the product line association happening here again it's more or less the same like the dependency that we are going to create it's on the foreign key id foreign id and that's going to be on product uh, line id <coughs> and i can allow a uh, um, and again constrained on product line table product it's going to be product lines table and uh, maybe let's keep it multiple lines and it, it's going to be on again similar relationship cascade update we can allow but then maybe uh, product line if it is associated with the product i'm not gonna allow it to be deleted so restrict on delete i'm gonna keep that as a dependency or at least as a constraint on this again similarly uh the other part is the product uh, having the relationship with uh through the product id as a foreign key again it's going to be on products table and if let's say we delete the product then i don't i will allow it to be deleted even from this cascade delete to happen so cascade on delete i will allow so these are the constraints i am al allowing to happen so that's also done so the, we have defined whatever is needed as dependencies already so the other part now which we need to do is to uh, maybe seed create some seed and let's identify what needs to be done on the uh, factory first so i'm going to use the faker for that and i can maybe make it uh, unique again because it's um, i'm going to see a unique one and uh, what is that i have used i'll have to check once product factory is going to have a unique real text uh, real text maybe i'll limit it to some 15 characters and then um, next one again is similar but it's going to be on caption caption we are limiting to 30, 60 but i may be allowing it 30 characters over here again that's other part and the finally uh, let's also define one uh, okay this need not be unique because this is caption and you can add any caption and the final part is details which can be a complete paragraph so i can maybe have it as a paragraph uh paragraph with the uh, sentences number of sentences maybe i'll keep it to three and uh, maybe it, i can vary between zero uh, one to three so i'll just keep it as a paragraph with max three and it can vary between one to three so that's that's what i'm creating here so this is my definition for the factory now i need to define um, the seeds uh, within the um, product seeder so i'm going to do a for loop there right away and maybe seed some 0 to 30 product maybe i can have 100 products who's what is stopping us okay and then 
I'm gonna create a product create a product through the factory I'm gonna have uh, maybe home um, one product is that oh, I have defined it let me check product cedar it's creating okay I, I have kept it as a random number between I'm just creating more than one product against uh, so I can maybe I don't need hundred and all because anyway it's gonna create multiples so I'm just gonna keep it 15 and I am gonna keep the products between uh, uh, a random integer 1 4 to 12 that means it's going to create anything between 4 to 12 number of uh, products for this as soon as this entry is uh, as soon as it hits this fa factory so factory can create bet between something uh, between 4 to 12 uh, number of products and let's also associate uh, attach okay and the next step is ideally going to create the product so that's that's what is going to happen this is really the code which is needed to create products but then we have dependencies defined so that also has to be uh, cre uh, associated so for that i'm going to say has attached dependency so whenever a product is created i'm going to at associate uh, any one of the categories which we have defined this is again a dummy um, uh, at least this is randomly going to pick so i'm just going to say all from all just pick up one thing which is random again this is going to associate one random category from the similarly i can also have the product line association picking picked up randomly and associating to this so this is how we are going to create a product with these uh, category associations so this should ideally create the product right now so let's uh, we have associated everything Our only thing which is pending i guess is to point to the cedar over here so i we had the category cedar already i'm gonna call the product uh, um, cedar as well so this is ideally going to create number of products for us to test with so this is more um this is more something which we need to be bothered about when we are doing development but then uh, if un unless it's a master data you need not do it on staging or uh, any other environments so that's going to happen so let's do a fresh migration and seeding again so that we it gets reflected on i think um, anything missing not okay we have some things missing still I, we can already see that because if i'm gonna migrate it's gonna throw an error saying that dependency is too okay it's saying name is too long store name is too long i guess that's not the error i was looking at okay so this is what uh, one thing this dependencies are missed right now so within product and uh, category we need to associate the dependency so let's do that uh, let's go to the models so i have the models here i have the product and let's define all the things needed i'm saying, going to say protected uh, dollar table is going to be called as products itself the default one if you change it to something like db underscore products or something then uh, maybe tbl underscore products or something then you might have to map it correspondingly here you'll have to make it here otherwise even if you don't have this it's going to work next part is uh, to uh, add the fillable so again protected this is for mass assignment fillable and i'm going to keep all the three parameters as fillable so that i just need to pass title all of that i can just say request out all is going to accept it title caption and finally uh, the details so three parameters which are allowed to be fillable that's done now the next part is uh, maybe i'll just keep some space over here so that we can see what's really going on function and i'm gonna call uh, so this is going to be a product has association with categories and that's going to happen through dollar this uh, dollar this uh, can i can just say belongs to many uh belongs to many category 
class category class that's not just enough right we also are pivoting against a table so we also need to point to that table right now so that table is going to be um we have created it we can always we have already migrated so if you refresh you can see uh, i think uh, migration is already failing so we are not yet there that migration has to still yet happen i guess okay i think it it's already there just that it does not have the cedar happening so one table is uh, this is category so category is having the product category table association so we can just point to that product let's go category so that's the table and that's that's pretty much enough but again we can always say how do you access it um, as pivot i think uh, i think uh, I, i'm just gonna say uh, as i guess that's how i need to use it if let's say it needs should not be used as pivot insert if you want your custom name i think this is the one but I think it should be called as uh, okay i'm not having anything so maybe this is enough so let's see how the response looks like because i am not too worried about how the pivot is going to be working because we are more interested in having these dependencies created so function one more we need which is on products having association with product lines so this is the other dependency which we are going to define here uh, we're going to add the code again it's similar return this uh, again belongs to many as soon as you have uh, pivot tables defined then you can always call it a, you can always uh, create a dependencies using p belongs to many so product uh, line product line class again it has a relationship uh, set through this uh, uh, which is that table product line product so that's a table product uh, underscore line underscore product this is the table uh, and we don't need to point to which are the foreign keys which are associated because uh, we have used the uh, default one which uh, laravel identify so we don't need to point to any other thing other than this so we have the dependencies created on the one end we also need the dependencies created at the other end for everything to work so let's do that so this is going to be on products again it's simpler similar dollar this um belongs to many through uh, category i think this is product class so again a reverse dependency is through the again the product category table so that's also done now the last bit here it's fine let's go back to product again and here you're having again we need to have the dependency on product line so we need to say uh the products are associated here so i can just say products and dollar again return is needed so otherwise we'll end up having lots of issue i need to maybe cross check at all the places because idly i normally miss that out so i just need to be sure that i have not missed it out so this is again going to be on product and this is product table is going to be called product underscore line underscore product so this is the last bit that's it uh, let me just go back to product and that through that to category and you can see that i had missed it out it's always needed let me always check at every point wherever i use it so returns are there even in product line the returns are there so this is fine now let's run the migration in seeding once more i should i think this time it should work perfect and let's refresh and see product line product is populated product category is populated that means uh, now we will be able to see products working with the uh, categories so um, it, it's going to be interesting right now so let's now start by building the api endpoints needed to populate products so um, as you know that products can be uh, the listing of products can be allowed to be accessed uh, without any constraints so that is the first part we are going to do we are allow we are going to allow the product owners to uh, create the products 
through their endpoints uh, through their middleware even they can delete their own products or you can they can update their products but then otherwise couple of endpoints we will keep exposed for accessing for outside world let's say if you are integrating with your stores or something so that's what we are going to do we are going to go to the uh, endpoint side routes right now and going to define couple of endpoints already so similar to how we had these two two things working categories similarly i'm going to say uh, i'm going to just expose products right now so one is products as an endpoint where every products can be accessed again we because there can be too many products we will implement a pagination over here so that's going to happen in the next episode but then again in this episode we are going to have uh, the products uh, it's not going to through be through an index uh, through index but it's going to be through show all i am going to show you what is going to happen there because i'm just going to say products but then again i'm going to have a query param associated there because we can have we can be clicking on let's say any of the category let's say men's if you are shopping for uh, something which is specific to men you're going to click on men and then it should only list all the products under men so uh, using query params you will be able to control uh, the uh, how the query has to happen or at least how the filter has to happen on each selection that you're making so that's what i'm going to do so for that i'm going to define in category controller one more function other than the um, other than the api function which we had exposed we're going to have one more so let's do that to start with it's an interesting one with query params i'm over here i'm going to create one more function called uh, called uh, show all and that's going to accept request okay, maybe i'll just finish this request illuminate request dollar request so this is going to accept a query param that's the first thing we are going to do i'm going to show you what's going to happen uh, so it's going to accept a category id through a query param so i'm just going to say request query and i'm just going to pass category id as one parameter so this is the first bit we are going to see I'm going to right away return this so that you can see what gets returned. So this is my first one and let's do PHP artisan API routes to see whether we have that routes available. So you have the routes somewhere over here begin with its API products. That's all of the products listed. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to see where that is defined we have the products over here there is all products this is the one i'm talking about so if let's say i don't have this to start with if i do a query controller show all okay what's that undefined method so con category oh it's within category all products did i add it in the category okay let me go back to api api let's refine this it's not category but product controller and let's go back now it should idly show us it's it's empty because we are not we are not passed anything so next step is that i add it as a query param like this category one is added now it should return that one let's say if you pass two that should only be two and if you don't have anything nothing is going to be passed that means in this case we should list all the products so that's what we're going to work on so let's go to product controller and uh, let's get rid of this return instead uh, i'm going to fetch all the products which are existing so i'm going to say uh, dollar products equals uh, product come on all this is all the products but then this is just going to let's see whether this works right now dollar products it should list all the products which are there so 
we are not bothered about what is there in the query param but it's listing all the products so you can see all of the products and it will be under different category so that filter has not yet happened so that's what we're going to do right now so this is not what we want we need that dependency uh, uh, we need to un understand how the categories are mapped and then get that so we we are going to use where has as a query so i'm just gonna say uh, where has in product is product is having this dependency on categories which we had defined categories function i'm just gonna pass the query on this and I'm gonna use this category ID and then that's and finally this is going to give me to get all uh, get all the products so I, I guess once we uh, execute this now it's just going to return again all the products and let's hope that so it's returning all the products because there is no um, there is no uh, you can see we have some 1118 number of lines of code i mean line, lines of response here i don't know how many records are returned we may we might have to implement pagination and all to see how many overall records are there and we'll do that in the next episode but let's let's see how we can control this right now so i'm gonna do a check over here if dollar category id is existing i'm gonna apply a query where condition on this so that means I can query on the category ID. So this is through happening through the pivot table, not directly on the products table because we are having that dependency defined over here categories through this pivot category table. So eloquent is intelligent enough to understand that we are going to query on this table and not on the products table. So that's going to happen right now. So we are going to query on this and we are just going to pass category ID again because we are not passed anything right now it's going to return all of the data again so you can see still it has that all of that data existing so now is the fun where we are going to pass the query parameter so it's going to identify that if there is a character id which we have passed it's going to do a where query on it uh, so let's do that so you can see it's already modified and then you are only getting some records so that means uh, some of these uh, products are uh, uh, with category id one so that that is what is happening right now so the query is working so we we know that products are existing only for some rec from ca some categories two three let's three even for three it's existing even for four it's existing we don't have a five because the, it, in this case it should return no data because we know that five does not exist boom it's empty so that's the first check so we can already see that uh, it started working um so we can already say we can already do a check over here as a first step if uh, categories is empty we can do a uh, throw new uh, not found http exception that means uh, products does not exist for category you can just say so that's the first response we're going to see we're going to see already that one so it does not exist for this category we can just pass three or something it's going to again return all the data so the next step is uh, to transform this let's go and create one transformer um so i'm going to do that over here brand um, let me maybe grab this one maybe this one because i need to also have that includes added so i'm going to rename that product transformer that's my product transformer so maybe minimize this and then modify our transformer product transformer it's going to accept product uh, and then we are going to have a brand i mean title of the product then we had the caption of the product and then finally we had the details so maybe also uh caption 
maybe we can also pass the date and time which might be needed for sorting or something but then again sorting is easier to be done on the client side than on the server side so maybe if you need to list some created date i don't think that's even needed uh we will only use the sorting for maybe uh, uh from the back end so that the front end need not do that so i'm just leaving sort the dates part out of it and then including the store uh, i don't need store but i need the product line information so that's what i'm going to pass here i'm going to say dollar product lines first and then i just say product line transformer that's one part where i'm i'm going to include the product line include product line and one more thing that we need again is to have the category or information also passed so include uh, category that's again through categories and i can just say category transformer that's that's the other part so i have the includes for both right now there can be better ways of doing this includes but i'm just going to use the default include set default includes which i might just use when as in when when it is needed so so we have the transformers and all done so let's go back to the controller again um where is my controller product controller minimize this and I'm gonna transform this. So I'm just gonna say dollar this response. And uh, this is going to be a collection. And I'm gonna pass products and create the new uh, product transformer. That's it. So idly now it should respond with the transformation. Yeah, so it is transformed now. It is not sorted or anything because we are still responding all of the data and it's only for uh, id3 if let's say i remove this it's going to return all the data so you still you get back all of that you're you seeing the number reduce because uh, we had removed the data and time uh, the date time part so that's done so show all is done now comes uh, show all is needed for let's say um, all of the customers who are visiting your stores but then uh, if let's say uh, I want to only see if I'm the store owner, I only want to see my store uh, information, then I can maybe pass a couple of parameters here. So I'm just going to see my um, product stores, store ID and I'm maybe pass product line ID as well. And I'm just going to see all the uh, products under my product line under my store again. So that's what I'm going to do here. So for that query is pretty simple again, I'm just going to query on the products i'm just gonna say i need all the product um where has again i know what all are the uh, uh what all are the relationship through which i have to navigate through so i i know that it's going to be through product lines that's a first dif uh, first uh, first dependency or at least uh, that's the first I think let's check that once it's going to be product lines capital L might be valid and then I need to go through the brands then I need to go through the brand is under storage so these are the through three relationship which I through which I might have to go through to get my all all my products so this is the complexity which eloquent is simplifying for you otherwise I can show you what kind of query you would have have to write to get that specific uh, response so i can just show you post this one uh use oh i'm gonna pass the store id and the product line id so two passed and then now i'm good to do my maybe i'll break it down into Two lines for dwt sake and then i end it over here and uh, okay it's messing it up maybe i'll just keep it the way it was earlier this is fine and then i can do a query on 
<coughs> where I know there is a relationship uh, to my store uh, so I can just say stores underscore ID dollar store ID this is going to return all the products coming under my store again I need to query on the uh, it's not going to return anything because we uh, we don't have any relationship of store to a product so this is idly not going to return anything I guess it will again be empty we can always check that let's see return dollar products so let's do the first check to see whether this works or not so product line id is not yet used but we can always check this so i might i can just go back to my um, api and this is limit uh, restricted through my uh, pre uh, the what do you call as the middleware so this is my store this is my i'm a store owner i want to see all my products so i may just say stores slash store id slash product lines slash uh product line id slash product so this is how i'm going to access my store information and it's going to be on index that's a function so right now like i said it might not return let's check that once so these are the products of the store store i don't know who is logged in so it's going to be a store owner who has to log in so i'm going to log in this 21 who's owning some of the stores so i'm going to do a login right now returns a token i'm going to use that token save it and let me go back to products it's query i think this is an empty one there's that it's not returning anything but let's see whether this store owner uh, number 21 is owning store number three uh, id3 so then if i go to the store brand uh, so id3 is having 789 as the brands so if i go to um, just trying to see how i can query so uh, 789 as a brand id and then if i go to product line let's check that 789 789 having product line 445 so i can always do a query 789 is having 445 4 5 i think it's not returning hopefully i am having i'm at the right store so prod user store let me again go back once mm. i don't see that stores okay it's on the stores id 3 which is fine to so 3 5 is a valid one it does not it's not showing any stores because we're not past this 5 and we don't know whether that uh, product line has any products so we can always check that so it is 5 so i go to product line product and if product line id 5 i don't know there are okay it has some products so i guess this should get listed so let's check that let's modify our code and go back to our uh, view controller controller not view controller and add the where condition needed <coughs> query where product uh, underscore line underscore id it's going to be product line id I think now it should list some of the okay still it's not there get products so again we might have to check uh, do I have any other product lines None. okay let's check once more 
which is the product uh, which this user is having so user 21 is logged in user 21 has two stores um, owner is 21 store names are these two and three are his stores so if I go to even let me let me check on two and five okay let's go two and three are our target stores I go to brand store and I can see two two has brand one two three so we have one two three let's focus on one two three so I go back to product line brand product line brand store and then I can have uh, where is my pro brand product line two and three are my brands this is non existing okay two and three store ID brand ID is 789 let's check for 789 okay even that store does not have any so one two three one has so one two three is the product line maybe check that one yeah finally something so this query is working right now let's say we if let's say we did not have this relationship it would have not listed anything let's check that once again um oh, it's listing so that's good so i guess uh, that inner uh, query is working as well so it it's going to list all the all the products for that store i guess so let's check the count it's two 290 and as soon as uh, I have this uh, relationship enabled let's check the count again yeah so it was listing all of the products so the querying was working all good so let's say if I had not passed the product ID then it would have listed all the products for that uh, for, for the store it's querying through this relationship so that works fine so let's now transform this again let's add this uh, kind of conditions over here let's say if nothing is there then I return products not found for maybe product line I can say product line so that's what we are trying to see that's the response uh, uh, product owner is going to get and then again we can transform this dollar this <coughs> uh, collection pass this and new product uh, transformer so this should ideally work this is what we wanted to do but again record is too big maybe it will be a good idea to have uh, pagination in place as soon as the number of products is going to increase so we will have that in the next episode because this itself is a huge episode so we might have to break it down into one more episode so i'll do that in the next one so this index is done similarly uh, if you want to just have one day record for show let's do that uh, so here uh, we're going to pass for showing we are going to pass more than uh, more, one more param which is going to be the id which is again product id so if let's say you're just going to show listing of one product we, we are just going to pass id as well dollar id and then here it's going to be instead of get it's going to be a find and we pass the id so it's going to be not products but it's a single item which we are going to get i don't know keeps I keep hitting all the wrong keys product if products not existing i can just say if not product product does not exist uh, for the id for id and then I just pass the product and here instead of the collection I need to have an item and that's it again the transformer can be sending across uh, more information because it's more of a single item which I'm gonna send across transform so I can maybe have uh, 
uh, more information like i can set the includes set default includes where i'm going to pass couple of in oh, where i'm going to pass one is going to be the uh what is that going to be it's going to be the product line and the other one is going to be the category I guess this was called uh, product line I guess it can be small letters I guess so product line and category let's see whether this works otherwise we might have to keep it uh, in caps let's say so this is one endpoint which we might have to add again so let's go to the um, to the uh, API then this is going to be available for this store owner maybe we can also define one for all the users or it's because we already have all of the information uh, but again we might have to have one more for the end user as well which is not going to go through all of these loops so this is this show is more for the store owner maybe it was a good idea to create something specific for the store owner but again yeah we would stick to this for the time being so id i could have made it as store or store product controller or something maybe or admin store product controller i don't know that would have made sense so this is one endpoint which we created right now let's create and let's check that now so owner stores three product id so i don't know which was the product two for product does not exist well let's go back to the previous query one was there and two 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 one works that works so you can see that with product line as well as the category information is also available right now so this is one bit uh, oh okay can okay, maybe try one more yep that also works yeah so this is one bit where we are showing all the products uh, which are related to a store so that's to a product line maybe so then uh, let's go to creation part right now product controller let's do the creation because this was more uh, query creation is a little bit uh, similar but uh, we are having we might have to associate a couple of more things there so let's start with creation again uh, it all starts with the validation part itself so i'm going to create a validator again and i'm going to call it validator and that's going to be the support validator make and we can just pass the request directly to the validator and then we have to validate uh, this is creation we need to validate the title first part is to validate the title and then i can just say required field and then it's going to be a string type with minimum of three and i can limit it to max i think we had defined it as 30 or something can again can apply validation here depends on what is the level of validation that you have to apply and then it has to be unique on the table um, products column being title i don't want it i want the product to be unique and then the next part is to have the caption there is no much restriction on caption we can have it as required uh, with string type and then set them into three again and i can maybe limit the max to we had set it to 60 let's do that to 60 again and the final part is the details i'm also keeping the details as mandatory required string and minimum of three max of 60 
I don't know why the intelligence did not work, but hopefully the validation is true. That's it. Then the same kind of things. Validator fails, then we will return an error. Validator. Come on. Fails. Return. Dollar response. Jason. Um, I can say errors. We almost always sent uh, the responses in this way itself as errors. You can always send all the errors back. And with the 400 so that's that's done so validation is done now next step is to have the um, um, the implementation started so we need to fetch the the product list product line on which the validation has to apply so let's fetch the product line to start with so again query is more or less like how we had been writing product line product line again where has so we know that uh, where has uh, product line has to go through the brands and stores let's define the function maybe i'll keep this function um, query and we can use what are we passing here so we will be passing all of that we have the store ID and product line ID two parameters passed for creation so I'm gonna use both of these within the use then let's define the function this is going to return a product line so I'm just gonna say query on the store ID this is to make sure that the store uh, store is uh, what uh, this owner is owning if whether he's the store owner or not so this will only come here be before it would have already validated the store ID earlier and if it is not it would have thrown him out if it's already passed then we can always query using that we can query and then check whether the store is uh, belonging to the same user or not or whether any product line exists for the store or not so where product uh, line id product line id so that that's two checks and then okay we did not we need not have this here because i can just do a find dollar product line id so i i do not want i i don't want this second parameter which was passed here so this one is enough where i'm getting the product line so i can always say if uh, product line is existing if not existing i say do don't do anything further because product line itself is not there through new not found HTTP exception product line does not exist for brand so that's done now if product line is existing let's go with the creation of the product then so i'm going to create the product through the product line so product line has uh, products as a dependency and then i can say a create on that and i can just pass the request all so this is ideally going to create all the products so just to make sure that um, we already had done this so if i let's say go to the products or maybe if i go to the product 
okay so fillable is on so it should allow me to create like this as soon as everything is accepted as a json mass uh, assignment as possible right now so product creation will happen and once we can keep this within try catch block so that's going to be an http exception and comment this and then let's keep this inside so this is one part where the creation of product is happening the next part is that uh, we need to attach the category which is uh so category is something again uh when when this request is coming through one of the things which we might have to check is that category is also existing or not because we need to associate the product with the category so this is again a required field and that's going to be an integer i don't know why this is not giving me intelligence so maybe there is something messed up somewhere required string min3 okay this is the problem so now it should give me intelligence intelligence did not work again let's check that once more i don't know something is again off hopefully not so let's keep this in place and let's we give once we um once we run this we'll get to know whether there was an issue request unique min max min max uh, everything looks okay to me details okay caption minus three max we did not set so i guess that is also okay and then yeah we are accepting product category id and we are going to use that to um even before creation happens we need to see whether the category is existing or not so if we can always do a category id check over here and say category find come on using the uh, request dot category id so if uh, this does not exist we can always say the category is not existing I can just say throw new not found HTTP exception and say category does not exist. Then we can just uh, not allow this happen. Again, what is the issue here? Okay, we were trying to attach. So because if there is a category, if that if that category is existing, I can always do an attach of that. And I think I can pass it as an array category ID or again uh, we are getting this as category this is not category ID but category ID so this should attach um, the attach should work like that so maybe maybe I'll have to refer once I don't want to repeat mistakes so creation creation is so uh, it's happening through product is attached through the category again i i messed it up so product has categories so it's going to use that to attach and attach is going to be a single parameter accepted so this is the attach part and once this attach is completed we are going to respond back saying the creation succeeded so uh, response um, message product uh, created successfully and then we can pass the ID can always be because we can always cast it to integer um, product id so this is going to create the product and then we are just going to say respond give this response dollar uh, response 
json dollar response and it's a creation so 201 is the response so idly this is what is going to happen so steps wise uh, we have the validator checking for these values even it needs a category to be passed if that's not passed then we cannot add that product against any category so we are avoiding that using this validation um, then the next step is that uh, we are checking whether the product uh, line is existing on again uh, we need to have a check over here as well if okay again maybe we can have it okay we already having it here so we are checking for the category and also the product line whether their existence is there or not if that is existing we are creating it through the product we are creating through the product line we fetched uh, oh, again this is specific to the store so we know that this product is belonging the product line is belonging to the same store uh, which whose uh, user has logged in and then we are adding that product through the product line something like this it's accepting that and then um, again we are attaching this attaching is more to do with um, this product line addition is going to associate this product with that product line so we will see that entry within uh, the product line product table and this attach is going to have the association of the categories uh, with the product so that's the next step where this is going to happen and once that is done um, we are going to have send the response back so let's check this we have the store created uh, store function created let's go back to the api and add that endpoint for store i think we are pretty much getting closer to completion of uh, the products creation this is going to be a post we don't need this id so this is the creation part and we just need to call the function so i think this should be post yeah that is also done so let's try this now so let's go to the product post products i'm going to create a, a iphone sc uh, so i have these products right now there are so many products existing so we have uh, 127 products already we're going to add the 128 so we are going to see this id is equal to 128 created with this um, and i'm going to start by setting it to category id 1 just to make sure that uh, it's get it's getting tagged in a wrong wrong category so that i can update it later before that let's do a validation check i'm going to remove the categories and then i'm going to create this product line so it's already saying category id is required and it is missing and that's the first check maybe um, i can also check whether this validation is working uh, the unique validation so i should it should even give uh, uh so unique validation okay i was picking up the caption that's the reason so maybe let's check that copy paste now it should not allow me title is already being taken so let's check that and now uh, when i try to create it says the product line does not belong to this brand that means i need to go back and check uh, from the queries that we had done what is a product line where under which i can create this product right now so i have a prod store number two with product line id two i'm going to use that now to create this product two and two so i'm just going to use two and two under which this product is going to get created create and message product created successfully uh, like i said 128 i number item number 128 is also created so we can re refresh and see and you can see that the item is created product is created once some of the things that we were talking about is the dependencies being added so 128 again should be here you can see uh, product line id 2 is added the dependency for this product 128 and one more thing is the category ad addition so the last product created 128 has an association to category id 1 so we are done with this one so creation works fine and maybe we can always try to fetch that 128 right now i guess it should give me that product information that so that is also working 
it's coming under menstrual this is what we are going to update right now because we don't i don't want this to be under uh, menstrual so that's where what i'm going to do with put where i'm going to update this to maybe category three so let's do that bit right now it's it, it's now we understood what needs to be done already so it's it's more or less like going to be like a cakewalk i'm gonna grab all of most almost all of these codes which i had already used up till here and then i'm gonna go to update side it's going to be the validator um, is more or less those kind of things are going to remain but uh, let me grab some more things like store id and product id i'm also going to grab that um for update and then one more parameter is going to be the id of the product which i'm going to update so uh validator again is going to check as and when the values are there so i can have uh, maybe four kind of validations applied here like a first check is that the request has the title being carried or not so that's the first check if title is being carried i'm going to do the validations that's the first thing even before that i think we can always do this first check of validation at the beginning itself and uh, maybe respond back early if some of these things are not valid let's say store id I, if i don't have the product line again there is a difference here we can query on the product itself instead of product line uh, because uh, i don't think uh, okay even if the product line is coming through i i really need whatever i need is a product and not a product line uh, because i can always okay i will be using this product line for sure id i'm gonna pass this inside this and i'm gonna you fetch the product directly so query where um product line id product line id and i will do a find on id so that's really giving me the product so first check itself is like the whether the product is existing or not so i can just say product product does not exist for product line or something so that's the check in category we are already fetching here i think there is one more this one we missed out or did we the categories okay we are not yet used it we have not yet used it so we will use it again um, we are trying to fetch the category here if it does not exist we will just say it does not exist and re return it back so we are fetching the product over here and then saying the product does not exist and then uh, be after those things are done let's do start doing the validation first validation is that whether the title is existing if yes we will do uh, the first check whether this title is minimum 3 max 30 if whether it is unique and all if it does not match any of this we will return saying this otherwise we can always say um the the product we already have access to right now because we try to query and fetch it then i can just say title equal to the request title so that's it so that part is done next is um, the next part which is uh, let's say the caption if let's say you are trying to update the caption again more or less same things are here only the validation might change i'm just gonna remove the first part and then uncomment this caption is we are checking for caption if caption is not valid you will return this this looks repetitive we can maybe uh, improve it later once we do some refactoring i'll do that uh, later and then last part is details if all of these are mandatory to be or at least if you are updating any of these so again uh, we can get rid of this and uncomment this and finally uh, category is something we were trying to update let's say even that uh, we can keep as category id is if that is the some is that is something we're trying to update you can validate even that and then send an error and then here it should be then category id which we are updating 
uh no this is not the way if category is going to be synced and not updated like this because we need to also update the other table so uh, at least the category part we cannot set that because it's a dependency table so we'll have to go through the categories and if it is an update whatever we have to do is to do a sync call earlier we had done an attach when we were creating but here it's more of updating so it can accept an array of uh, values but sync in this case i'm just going to send the category which we are going to update and then i'm just going to pass the update as an array so it's going to replace delete whatever is not there within this array and re replace it with whatever is there in this array so ideally you're going to only see this updated this one record updated and the other being replaced so th this is the bit where the category updation is happening so that is also done and now maybe i'll remove all the commented code come on and the last bit that's done so we have done this bit validation is also done and finally once this is all done we can just say if let's say the product uh, is dirty so if there is some change which has happened to the product then we will do a save so i'm going to keep that within try catch and then replace this with http exception come on And comment and I can just call product dot product save that's it and then that will save and once the save is done um, I can just say maybe I'll keep it everything outside because I know one thing which might not be dirty will be um, the sink which is happening there that's not going to make the product dirty so to make it easier for myself because every other value is going to be mandatory or something so i'm just going to keep um, um updation at least it just going to, i mean even if let's say there is no update happening i'm just going to return saying product uh, updated so if somebody try to update it's just like that without passing anything i don't mind i'm just going to keep it as this message and then i'm going to respond saying product is updated so let's try this updation happening so iphone I'm, maybe I'll change some of the things which he had been doing here. So which is the product which we created? 2, 2 and 128. I'm going to update that now. 2, 2 and 128 is the product. Currently it is iPhone SE. I'm going to make it iPhone, uh, iPhone 13 something next gen iphone 13 so i'm gonna update lots of things uh iphone 13 series and then i'm gonna update it to a uh, category id 4 so that's what i'm gonna try do right now so maybe i will update try to update without the category update so let's do this first so this should ideally update put method is not supported for this route okay so we might have to add it let's do that did we i think we already did that i don't know why it didn't work uh stores product lines products uh okay we do not have a put so this is an update function and we need to pass even the id this is going to be put i guess now it should work let's go back to the view. controller call to identified function brands product brands okay uh, okay i was something is wrong let's go check I, why is it pointing to brands i think uh, we need i made a mistake somewhere let me go back product controller uh, 
okay so this should be not directly so there is a product lines missing here product lines dot branch dot stores i think this should fix that category does not exist okay it's validating that how come that's it is validating request dot category id somewhere it is validating somewhere we have made a miss uh, title caption details category id why is it checking for category id Product 128 category does not exist. Oh, it says category does not exist. And why is it saying that? Let's check. Category find. Okay. So one miss here is that I should have checked for this. First check and this. So ideally it should have category for having that value so now product updated successfully and let's refresh it's updated it's still one and let's go to the product section it should be now uh, iphone 13 the next check iphone 13 so that update happened but still i just need to update let's say only the category right now so because i had tagged it under men section still i want it under maybe lifestyle section so i'm gonna update this with item category id 3 so let's do that product updated successfully so we can only see that change happening in product category so let's let's check that so yeah so it is uh, now under item of uh, the category id 3 so that's also done so update is working fine so we are able to see the products getting updated if you want to see this product specifically under which category it is updated now so this was the older one uh there there were so many changes which happened to this product right now and you can see those changes are updated but i still see that the details is wrong it's updated the details wrongly maybe uh, it was a miss somewhere over here where uh, caption caption is fine details title is fine caption is fine details is also fine what is that i passed for update Ah, okay details is different what is wrong here in updating and let's go back to this day okay maybe it's a problem with the transformer so we'll have to correct the transformer then so product transformer is sending caption that's a reason okay so let's go back now it's fine so it was a problem with the caption uh, with the transformer now you can see all of that even the category is updated now so all good now so let's go back and do the final bit which is the delete the interesting and the final part which we need to do it does not take much time because we already have uh, uh, if you have to delete a product you just pass the i all these three things we are passing again for deletion um, so instead of this i'm going to pass product store and because it's going to be deleted by the store owner it's better that uh, the checks are in place so i pick the product i think the category check is not needed uh, we might need that oh, no we don't need that so we don't need this check request dot category fetch is not needed we all, all all that we need is to check for the product and it because it's already allowing cascade delete of the category we are going to see that getting deleted from the product category table so this is the product query remains the same if product does not exist we can say the product does not exist for the product line if not it will allow the delete to happen 
and uh, HTTP exception throw the exception and make the delete happen over here product delete enter and then we can maybe use reuse this one for a deletion as well I'm just gonna say product deleted successfully and I because the product might be deleted I'm just gonna use the ID and respond back with this 200 so let's delete the product which we had iPhone 13 which we had created and we will see that all of the entries will be removed from all of these uh, sections like we have this product line product where you can see 128 is existing along with the product category where also this 128 will be there so we are going to see all of that disappearing as soon as we call make the delete call so before that let me add the delete api endpoint last bit and with that we will be ending this episode delete this should be a function destroy and it's going to remain the same because it's again a delete so we have the endpoint in place let's go to the delete we already have the delete so store was 2 product line was 2 and id was 128 so we are going to delete let's see product does not exist for the product line so it should be 2 let's go check and product deleted successfully so let's go fetch product does not exist for the id so it's already gone now let's go and check in product line product 128 should be gone even here so you can see it's not there and within product category also that dependency has to be removed so you can also see that it's not this because cascade deletes happen properly so pretty much whatever i have wanted to cover in this it's done uh, we were more there were too many things covered in this one so um, there are so many concepts which which is captured in this one let's say association then i had this query param which was used for uh, fetching all the products under a uh, under a category and then uh, there were a couple of dependencies which were defined for a product on the category side as well as um, something like this in this design like um, the product was associated one to end with the product product lines and then we had the categories so all of this is working right now well so that's what i wanted to cover in this one hope you liked it uh, keep subscribed uh, like this episode if you if you liked it and then share it if you can so that i get more visibility um, and helps uh, help grow the channel so uh, that's it for this episode uh, more things are coming up like pagination and everything and then uh, there are still lots of stuff which are which are needed which are might be needed for the customers in like favoriting some of the products let's say adding to cart um, and then even adding reviews and everything which is coming up pretty soon enough so stay subscribed uh, uh, support the channel and then uh, come back for more uh, until the next episode it's bye from me